When the Murray-Darling Basin Authority offered the support the project by publishing it, uh, I originally envisioned it being some sort of a, a collection of information, a book. And what came through from people like Peter Jackson and Janet Pritchard was the information's got to be organised because uh, these days the scientists assess the quality of, of, of rivers, the habitat, by the abundance of fish. So some way I had to come up with a measure of how common these fish were in the past. They use a series of scores, so I had to come up with a methodology. And not only that, I had to come up with multiple lines of evidence to justify the conclusion. So basically if a fish was abundant, I would consider an angler on a typical day could catch five or more. If fish were common, on a typical day they would get one or two. If fish were rare, a local angler would maybe not catch them each day, each day, but each year they would get a handful of them. So they were definitely there but uncommon. So I had to come up with ways of justifying the scores that I came up for fish in the Murrumbidgee or the Mitamita River or wherever. So I could talk to the anglers and get their descriptions of abundance. I could get photographs, and the photographs are great proof that the fish were there. Uh, a missing piece of the jigsaw was newspaper articles. And I remember going down to the State Library in Melbourne and thinking, I'm going to do a comprehensive newspaper source, because there'll be a lot of information on fish and fishing. And after my first day, I gave up, because it reams and reams of uh, microfilm that you've got to wind through a machine looking for articles, yet you're going through a newspaper you know, page by page, is there something on fish? And I knew it was impossible. The original format of the work changed from being a, a, a book, a historical book, to being uh, a summary of information. And so the Murray-Darling Basin Authority asked me to redraft it in that form. And one of the strokes of luck that happened while I was doing that was the National Library of Australia started scanning newspapers. And therefore you could do word searches. So I could search for cod, I could search for trout cod. And over a period of about six months, I found three or 4,000 newspaper articles. And they were all the missing links. You know, this stream here, this stream here, species were described. I discovered the, all the work that David Steed had been doing on trout cod in the 1920s. I found out that there was, uh, they'd been introduced to the era. Nobody had ever known that. So in terms of the, the information I got, it virtually doubled my information on native fish and it was hard evidence. And I could not have done that if that had not been scanned and done by the National Library. And so, in terms of historical research, I think there's two things that have to be done. It doesn't, it doesn't matter whether it's native fish or koalas up trees or the heritage of some person. There's two things that have to happen for historical research in this country. One is, all the photos that are in the histo historical societies that are deteriorating, we've got to get them scanned and catalogued before they're lost forever. We should be calling on the public to submit photos. Anything before 1930 on anything should be submitted and scanned and saved. The second thing is the National Library's got to finish the project of scanning newspapers, right? Because at the moment there's only a small proportion that's been done. I found 4,000 stories on native fish. What stories are there on quolls? What stories are there on rivers? What stories are there on just local history, right? Because without that stuff being scanned, without search engines to looking for keywords, it's impossible.